What's going on everyone? So today I'm going to, be going to be doing a quick little sort of vlog style video and that is about upgrading my home theater PC with something a little bit better. Okay, so for, your, for all of you that don't know, this is my current uh, home theater PC. I did do a video on this a while ago and it was in a different case, much cheaper case. Um, I've switched cases since then but still it's pretty much the same build on the inside. It's uh, Actually, show you. Yeah, pretty much it's the same build on the inside. Uh, just a Core 2 Duo, 550 Ti, uh, 80 gig hard drive, 4 gigs of RAM. That's uh, pretty much all there is to it. You know, it's it's an alright system. It's been crashing a lot lately. I think that's from the light pack that's connected to it. Um, but yeah, I think it's time to upgrade. This thing's big, it's noisy, it's a waste of space and power. And really it's, for this form factor, there's no use for it for a, for a media center. So what I've got here is I've gone out and spent some DOSH and got myself a little small form factor Dell. And if you can hear some wind noise, uh, sorry about that, I've got the fan on, it's very hot today. Okay, so this is my new media center. As I said, it's a small form factor Dell. It's an Optiplex 990. It's running a Intel Core i3. Now this thing would be pretty much perfect as is if it wasn't for the fact that it doesn't have HDMI, it only has DisplayPort. I think so Dell could save a couple cents on each unit or something silly like that. And being that it's a uh, small form factor, it's only half height, which means there's all the graphics cards that you can get that are half height are crap. Um, to put it in perspective, the most, the most newest, expensivest small form factor card that you can get at the moment, um, most powerful one is, I think it's a 740 or 750 or something, uh, GTX. And it's on par with the 550 Ti, so go figure. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do, be doing here is um, replacing the GPU, I'm gonna have to externally mount a GPU, and it's going to be mounted, the whole system's gonna sit underneath my receiver, so it's gonna look pretty schmick there. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna have the actual GPU on display. Uh, for the GPU, I can either go with this 550 I've got here, or I can go with this 660 I've got here sitting on the floor. Uh, this is a card that I picked up off eBay. Um, I never really made a video on it just because it was a very long process repairing it. Um, a lot of troubleshooting. It took ages, took weeks, and I'm still not 100% sure if it actually works properly because um, I was using this in my main PC. It was running fine, but every now and again it would blue screen, and I'm like, oh, the card must be definitely something else wrong with it. So. I went out and bought the 670, I smacked it in there, kept on running it. It turns out that the problem I was having was because my old board, which is also a um, Core 2 Duo board, only supported 4 gigs of RAM. The system was letting me boot with 6 gigabytes of RAM, which meant that, um, basically meant it would boot with 6 gigs of RAM, but as soon as it hit that 4 gigabyte sort of threshold, it would crash because it would, the, the RAM would become corrupted and everything. So um, that was that was the problem. I, I switched to a new board and everything, as you've seen in my other videos, and it's been running solid ever since. So it looks like this, this GPU is working. I don't know, we'll have to see. And because this is a small form factor board uh, system, this, this GPU is actually, sorry if that's out of focus, the GPU it's actually bigger than the whole system, like height-wise. And to remedy that, I've gone ahead and ordered a PCI Express 16 uh, extension cable. Now this is just a cheap one, I think I paid five bucks for it. Um, you can get much longer ones, you can go up to almost a meter. But I just picked this one because it was cheap and I just wanted to play around with it. Um, if the length is a bit of a matter, um, as you'll see it will be, I'll just extend this or buy a bigger one. I'll probably just extend and extend it. This is, I um, oh, can't remember what the pin pitch is, but basically it's slightly thinner ribbon cable than say, 
standard IDE cable, but I think it's a bit thicker than um, IDE 100, uh, which is a little bit thinner than this. So I'll have to try and find some ribbing cable that matches this uh, sort of pitch. And then once I do, it'll be easy job of just extending it out and making it as long as I want. Um, the length doesn't really alter the bandwidth or anything. Um, it, bandwidth and stuff is mainly altered by crosstalk and stuff, which PCI doesn't tend to have a big issue with. Um, you can look it up online, there's plenty of videos about it. So I'll just do a run through of what I'm going to do. I probably won't be able to film all of this, but um, just because I have to go do some stuff in a minute, but I thought I'd film this today and try and get it out. So normally I don't like pre-built machines. I find them a waste of money, no matter what anyone says. Um, but for, for the correct application, they're really good. Like for this, the media center, it's correct application, it's awesome. So this has got a, I believe it's got a 3.3 gigahertz i3 in it. Um, the system ended up costing me $150 plus a little bit extra for shipping. So it worked out to be about $190 shipped, which is alright for one of these. It's i3, it's got a DVD drive, whatever. Uh, it's got 4 gigs of RAM. And yeah, so let's just open it up. And here we are greeted with the system. And as you can see, sorry if that's a bit overexposed. Yep. Um, as you can see, it's pretty well compact. It's got a blower style cooler on it, which... Uh, I'm assuming is very quiet. I've, I've read some things about this this model being like so quiet you don't even notice it. And in there we've got two PCI expansion slots. I believe they're both 16. It doesn't really matter for this sort of application. And you know, standard sort of office -y type machine. Everything's really easy to pull apart. This does have a 250 gig 7200 RPM drive inside it, which I'm going to be stealing and putting in my gaming PC and swapping drives with their smaller 320 2.5 inch drive. It's it's quieter and it's a bit more efficient and you know I could frankly do with a faster drive in my main machine. So you know as usual to pull these apart it's pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera down I'm going to rip uh, as much stuff out of this as I can to get some more room to show you and I'll be back. Okay I'm back again and here is the inside of the system that took all of probably 30 seconds to remove everything that was in the way. I uh, got the hard drive there, it's a Seagate, it's a Seagate Barracuda, uh, 7200 RPM as I said. It's got a laptop DVD drive with standard SATA connections, uh, just 5 volt. That'll focus, yep, just standard SATA connections, pretty cool. So that's just a reader I believe. I've got a whole bunch of other drives I can throw in there. I might actually throw in a slot loading drive or something. Uh, out of a Mac or something, it might be kind of cool. Here's the cooler, it's actually quite big. Again, this is only an i3, I think it's a 40 watt TDP or something, so it's not too bad. So basically, at the moment, this cable's too short. I was going to poke it through in here. Uh, this model, you can't remove this whole piece here. Older, older optiplexes, you could remove this piece on the back here and use a riser, and that would allow you you to use a full height card because it would mount it horizontally but this system is so small that there was just no point doing that. Now I was originally going to mount the card inside like this but it's a bit too big. Um, the bare card itself would fit if I squeezed it in there but I would have to change the heatsink as it does hang over a bit. Same with the 550Ti, I think they're about the same size actually. So all out of focus but yeah they're about the same size uh, the 550 is a bit smaller but go big or go home all right so what's what I'm gonna do is I believe the second this second slot is uh, by 16 so I could just plug this in here like this probably stick it down with something and then sit that there and then grab the card, and the card will have to install upside down, which isn't a problem. It'll plug in there, and I'll just make some stands for it. And Bob's your uncle, should be fine. Uh, for the lid, it's going underneath my receiver anyway, so I might just not bother putting the lid on. 
Um, we'll see because then this fan could draw some nice cool air into the receiver and get the receiver cool as well. Sorry, I was pointing down here. Uh, this fan would blow in here, and there's nothing. There's really nothing generating any heat inside here, like lots of heat, like a GPU would. Uh, there's the power supply, which I don't know where it gets air from. Like that's all closed off. Yeah, as I was saying, that's all closed off. I think, being this is such a small power supply, it probably doesn't need active cooling anyway. But I don't know, it's got holes in the back and stuff. On the side, on the side note about the power supply, it's a, that's the specs on the power supply. It's probably not big enough to run this machine with the graphics card. Uh, that's a max total output of 240 watts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modify this system a bit. I'm going to install probably one of those add two PSU units I reviewed a while, uh, I reviewed a while back. And I'm going to jerry-rig this in here. I was thinking about just tacking off, pulling up the data sheet for the uh, power supply, or pulling apart the power supply and finding the uh, three volt or the the logic on there, the green wire, which I think is the same coloring as a standard ATX, but you know Dell like to change things, so it's more than likely just the same color green wire. And it's just a pin sensing if it's high or low, or floating and low. So yeah, I could tack that onto another power supply and they could turn on in tandem, turn off in tandem. Or I could be a bit lazier and just uh, use a, a, a relay setup like those had two PSU units. So yeah, we'll have a look. And then I'll just use this 550 watt power supply that's in this system, nice and quiet, and see how it goes. And yeah. So I'm going to get ahead and start digging into this. I probably won't bother removing the heatsink and stuff. Uh, there's not much point. So yeah, I'm going to get ahead and start building this thing up and be back in a little bit. All right, so I'm about halfway through messing around with this thing now. And I spent probably like 20 minutes trying to work this one out. I forgot that the optical drive just uses this little connector, not one of the solder ones. I was trying to make the power connector for the SATA reach. Uh, all the wires are all jumbled up, I don't really care about that. So now that's all that's left to do is hook up a second power supply, plug this in and sit it up there and then sit something underneath the graphics card to hold it up. I'll probably get like a, a stick or something and then sort of like make it look nice. Um, as for the lid, because this cable is going to be running out over this piece here, um, I was thinking about what I could do with the lid. And I could, I could put the lid sort of half on like this, like clip it in there or something, and then have the cable running out, or I could just not have the lid at all and then sit the, because uh, I'll need to get a piece of wood or something anyway and sit on top of this to get the, because uh, that receiver is way too big, and get it all set up like that. And so now I'm just going to wire this up, and yeah. Okay, so it's a few days later now, or more specifically like a week, and um, I've just been working away at this machine, uh, mainly just working with all the software side of things. Uh, the hardware's done. Uh, as you can see, sorry if the lighting is a bit bad, it's a bit dark in here at the moment. Um, so because this is an i3 machine, and this board and power supply can run up to the i5 version, where they just swap the CPU out. The i3 uses a fair amount less um, power than the i5, so there's more headroom in this power supply. This card here draws max 240 watts, I think, no, mm, is it 240? Well, I can't remember, or is it 140? I can't remember. Anyway, um, so I can actually run this card directly off the 12 volt supply for this system. It's an i3, so it, you know, uses hardly anything. I think it's about 50 or 60 watts. Uh, it's got a 2.5 inch drive. Optical drive hardly ever boots up, so it's sort of negligible. And yeah, so let's have a quick look at the inside and what I've done. So the GPU is probably going to sit upside down like this. Um, I'm going to make some stands for it, and it's just going to sit underneath the receiver there. I'm going to make a little shelf for it. And then probably like get some black card or something and sort of cover up the front so you can't see it. 
Um, so I've just been sitting it on this box here, just out of the way so I don't step on the card. And the inside pretty much hasn't really changed since last time you saw it, except for the 12 volt line here. I've just tacked off two fairly beefy wires coming off the 12 volt supply for the CPU. The CPU really doesn't need much at all, actually. And that's coming back over here. And it's going into just a Molex, a uh, four pin Molex connector into the uh, six pin power supply. And this whole thing runs perfectly. I've run, a, I've run a fairly intensive stress test on the system. I haven't run it through like a, a benchmark yet because uh, I don't think I'll ever peg the whole thing out uh, graphics card wise. And it runs perfectly fine. It hasn't crashed or anything yet. The only problem I've ever run into it with it so far is there's a bug in Windows 7. Um, it's the performance detection system they've got in there. Basically, it's meant to, it's meant to detect if the system is running slow. So it, um, it'll give you this little message. It'll say, um, do you want to disable aero and all that fancy features because the system's running slow when really the system isn't running slow. And it's kind of hard to explain it. The computer thinks it's running slow when it's not. And yeah, it's a bit silly. So yeah, I haven't really decided how I'm going to mount everything. It'll probably just be sitting on a shelf on its own under there. Um, like I'll put a shelf on top of this purple one and then sit the media, the receiver on top and then the whole media center down there and knead it up and everything, but that's that's in the coming weeks. I'll probably do an update on that one. All right, so yes, it's completely self-powered, which I'm very happy about because that means I won't have to use a second power supply. And let's boot it up and see what it does. I don't know why all the new Optiplex systems do this. Um, all the ones that work do the same thing. You press the power button, it boots up, and then just dies straight away, and then turns back on. Okie dokie. So, here's the system. The light pack's plugged in. It did crash the other day, and it's only just started working again. I don't know what's wrong with it. So, let's just get this all set up here. I'm just doing this freehand, sorry. And a custom boot logo. This is running Windows 7 Ultimate 64-bit. Still too overexposed. Right down. Okay, so it's Windows 7 Ultimate 64 bit. Customize the system a fair bit. Let's grab the remote. And I fitted a Bluetooth module in this computer so I can use the PS3 Bluetooth remote. It's all set up and works with Windows. Let's wait for this to boot up. Automatically boots into Kodi, formerly known as Xbox Media Sound. And yeah, and it can connect straight up to my server. I've already got most of the most of the media set up, and see, I can just scroll. This is Bluetooth, and it works with pretty much everything. I'm still setting up. I've still got a few tweaks I have to do to it, just sort of user user experience stuff. But like here, I can go. Say I go here, go to movies. Just got a recently added. This is probably all terribly out of focus. But say, you know, I could go here and I press the uh, view button and it'll bring up a description about the movie and everything and where it's located on the server and I can go across and I can go like trailer. I won't play the trailer for copyright reasons, but it gives you a description about it and everything. So you just press back on the remote. Haven't set up music yet, mainly because I don't really use I do have a lot of music, but it's not on the server. It's on my main desktop. I don't know why I did that, but I have to move it. Um, here we have Steam and Chrome Launcher, which is excellent. Sorry, it's full falling down. Sorry if this is out of focus. Let's see if I can get out of focus. There we go. It should be in focus now. Um, so we'll have a look at Steam first. And this, lo this should load into Steam Big Picture mode. is working yeah steam's kind of slow to boot up it's not set to auto boot with windows just because it gets in the way 
and I can plug in the Xbox One controller and use it with most of the games. And if you just notice there, the mouse disappeared. I'm also running a piece of software that automatically hides the mouse after two seconds if you don't use it. Um, there's still a couple bugs with that with, uh, with the Chrome launcher I'll show you in a minute. But yeah, you go through here, you go to my library. I'm just using the Bluetooth remote right now. Uh, it's just doing some updates for some stuff. If I go to library, Call of Duty, and you can use a controller and stuff with it. I might get the wireless adapter kit for the controller and put it in there. And just so you know, there's the fans spinning all fancy. And yeah, they've got Doom 3. I'm going to go through and add a bunch of games that work with controllers, with the Xbox One controller. So yeah, and this is set up because it's set up through a launcher through Kodi. If I just go... Or I press... Oh no, I go up here. Press exit and then just go, I don't know, exit Steam, stop it from downloading. It'll quit back to here, but Kodi will relaunch. So, which is pretty cool. So if we go here again, we can go down to Chrome Launcher and I've got a few things set up. I've got Google, which this, this launches Chrome into what's known as Kiosk Mode. It has no Omnibar or anything like that. So it goes Google or Vimeo, Vimeo, I can't delete that, it won't go away. Or YouTube, which is the most interesting one. Yeah, so it loads up into uh, YouTube and it just loads into my YouTube account here. See, so I can go uploads. Um, go back. Yeah. And yeah, I can scroll down here, go through all my subscriptions and stuff, like bring up. Let's bring up this one and see it works. It comes up with a cool background and stuff. And yeah, um, the light pack I think is working. I don't know. It keeps on crashing. It's getting kind of annoying. But yeah, so that's YouTube. I'm just still using the remote for it. It's pretty neat. So if I want to go back, um, there's no way to exit out of um, Chrome when it's in there's no like, I can't just press back and it'll exit. So to get back to it, what I have to do is I put a hot key onto the red button and that quits. And if I press the pop-up menu, I know this is a lot of focus, but if I press the pop-up menu, I can do stuff like this. Exit, whatever. Um, return. And if I press start, I can scroll up here. I know it's super overexposed but if I just go here I can open up Spotify and it's doing an update naturally um, but yeah the media controls I've set this up to work with the media controls so Spotify you can skip songs and stuff fast forward doesn't work I have no idea why but yeah sorry about the lines on the screen that's from the camera but yeah um, you still kind of need the mouse to use this, let's have a look here, let's go tab, skip to main content, I don't know what it's doing, let's just quit it. And another thing I set up, if I go, if I press display, it brings up probably the most underused feature of Windows 7, and that was this little app switcher thing. Um, the way this remote works, even though it does do key bounce, I can't go, I can set alt tab on this, but I, if I hold it, it won't. I mean, start tab, it won't it won't carousel like this. So I had to try and work out what the shortcut key was to hold this here. I think it ends up being start, shift, tab or something. But then I can scroll through it like this. So, you know, I can go back to Kodi or I can go back to the desktop. And yeah, so that's pretty much as far as this thing's gotten so far. And actually, I'll just go back. Open up YouTube again by accident, whoops. But yeah. It's working quite well. Um, I'll probably just finish this video here and then once I've got an update on it, I will show you guys. And it's running off Ethernet at the moment. I've got to fix that up. So this is really dark. Yeah, it's a bit better. Yeah, it's running off Ethernet at the moment, which is fine by me. Graphics card will probably end up sitting upside down. And there's no real way I can put the lid back on because the card, the PCI extension gets in the way. And yeah. That's pretty much it for this one. Um, if you have any sort of suggestions or tips or anything, um, 
let me know down, down in the comments down below. And this is one of the bugs I was having, you probably can't see that, but the, um, even though I've got the mouse cursor automatically hide, if I open up a page or a, a um, if I open up Chrome, it just seems to be Chrome that's doing it, the mouse doesn't auto hide until you move it. So I'd have to turn the mouse on, wiggle it, uh, move it around a little bit, and then let it sit still, and then the mouse will turn off. Um, it's a bug in Chrome. Yeah. Does it even not in kiosk mode? So, I don't know. It's not a big deal. Once, you, once you've once got the mouse to disappear, like it doesn't hurt anything. The only issue I have with lean back mode, which is what this is called, and, um, it doesn't do live streaming. Live streaming and playlists don't work, as well as I can't turn off autoplay, which makes sense. You're meant to just sit here and just watch it for hours, but it'd be nice if you turned off autoplay or put the timer on there. It doesn't even do a countdown timer, it just plays straight away. So yeah. Um, any comments, suggestions, or something I've done wrong, just uh, comment down below and yeah. Until next time, see ya.